this is Ian Mark from the 70s Rock Photos. I'm also the author of Adventures of a 70s Rock Photographer. In this video, I'm going to take you back to September the 21st, 1975, when I photographed Rush opening for Nazareth at Clearwater Beach just outside of Calgary. It was a hot day for September at 75 degrees. They were taking a chance at having a concert at this time of year. There could easily have been snow on the ground. If you have seen my video, Alice Cooper Haunts McMahon Stadium, you'll see how ugly things can get if the weather does not cooperate. However, in this case, it was perfect weather with nothing but warmth and blue skies. Even Dan McCafferty of Nazareth remarked at how hot it was. I remember talking to someone in the line as we were waiting to get in. I was there to see Nazareth. He was there for Rush, a band I knew almost nothing about. I remember telling him that I thought Rush's lead singer had a weird high-pitched voice and I didn't think that they would make it. So much for that opinion. Let's move on to the venue. As you can see, it is just an open field located beside a highway about 15 minutes outside the city of Calgary. There was no bus service out there. You either walked or drove. By calling it Clearwater Beach suggests that it is by the Pacific Ocean with sand and shady palm trees kissing the sky. Nothing could be further from the truth. There was only grass, trees, and a rocky shoreline by the river's edge, a short walk from where the stage was set up. Nonetheless, it was in this field that they set up a basic stage and the two bands played to about 1,500 people. Both bands played in the afternoon, so there were no lights set up just the sound system. Security was provided by local bikers who performed their duties as you would expect, with fights from time to time. As a photographer, you can never get too close to the stage, but for this concert, I was almost too close. At this time, I wasn't shooting for a magazine. That was a fantasy in the back of my mind. So instead of shooting black and white, as I did for Music Express magazine, I shot color slides. Because it was outside and the lighting was perfect, these images are very high quality. Not too many photographers have color shots of Rush this good going back to 1975. Getty Lee's kimono was reproduced beautifully with my Kodachrome. You can almost count the hairs on Lifeson's bare chest. I was lucky enough to get one decent shot of drummer Neil Peart and one of Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson together. I thought Lifeson was a fabulous lead guitarist who had a new grimace for every note. As a photographer, my feeling was that you could never have too many shots of a lead guitarist and there are plenty here. So I hope you enjoy every one of them. I had great fun shooting Nazareth. Some bands want you to know how hard they are working on stage. Nazareth was just there to have fun with the audience. This is the only time that a band hammed it up for me while I was taking their photograph. First it was bassist Pete Agnew and then Dan McCafferty, guitarist Manny Charlton and Pete all posed together. At one point a fight broke out in front of the stage but Dan McCafferty jumped down and broke up the fight right then and there. He didn't even wait for the bikers to do their job. I hope you have enjoyed these shots from the past. I thought we could end with a few images of Rush taken in 1977 in Calgary. Unfortunately, because Rush declared war on photographers a long time ago, I can't sell my Rush photographs from my 70s Rock Etsy store or my 70s Rock Amazon store. However, there are 18 shots of Rush in my book Adventures of a 70s Rock Photographer, available from Amazon, Etsy, or Chapters Indigo. If you want to learn more about my dealings with Rush, go to my 70s Rock YouTube channel and check out my video, My Rush Copyright Battle. Thanks for watching. Rock on!